All right, everyone. Uh, good morning. My name is Nissa Peterson, and I am a conservation specialist with Alberta Wilderness Association. Uh, we're still waiting on a few people to join us, but I think we'll just get this started. Um, just want to touch on a few things before we start the press conference. Um, in terms of uh, Zoom meeting etiquette, we ask that you ensure that your microphone is muted unless you're speaking. Um, and just for technological bandwidth, if you aren't a speaker, we ask that you just um, have your video off and your microphone muted just so that we don't run into any issues. I do wanna note that this press conference is being recorded. So we will be posting it on our YouTube channel afterwards. So if anyone is interested in that, um, just please let me know. And we are going to be having a question and answer period at the end of the press conference. Um, so if you have a question, just let me know in the chat box and then um, we will give you the floor um, as we, we go through the list of people who have questions. So um, with that, I'm gonna hand it off to my colleague, Ian Urquhart. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for, I was gonna say tuning in, but I guess zooming in is not what I'm supposed to say for these sorts of events for this morning's uh, news conference. Uh, my name is Ian Urquhart and I'm privileged to be the conservation director for Alberta Wilderness Association. Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to thank Nissa, uh, Sean Nichols, uh, Grace Wark, Christiane Olson for uh, all the help they've given, uh, they've given in pulling this uh, together today. Uh, AWA is pleased to have helped create this forum for a handful of organizations that oppose the Grassy Mountain coal mine project. Um, as you will all know, the public hearing into whether that project should be allowed to proceed uh, began earlier this morning. Uh, today's news conference, we've organized it as follows. So representatives from the organizations who are here this morning will offer brief remarks about their concerns with respect to Grassy Mountain. We also have a video presentation we'll be showing from the Livingston Landowners Group, and then a PowerPoint presentation from the Grassy Mountain Group. Uh, these latter two organizations are made up of landowners who live in the pass, who live in the Crow's Nest Pass area. Uh, after the presentations, as Nissa said, we'll take questions, and if you could let her know uh, that you would like to ask a question, she'll put you in that, uh, that, um, that, that lineup. Uh, we know that your time, like the resources and landscapes we're talking about this morning, is precious. So we intend to wrap up by 10.45, uh, by no later than 11 o'clock. Uh, before Dr. Andrea Hull starts us off this morning, there, there are two things I'd like to do. One is to introduce uh, our, our speakers this morning, uh, but also, uh, first of all, to, uh, to acknowledge uh, that we are on Treaty 7 land. Uh, acknowledging uh, uh, that we're on First Nations uh, territory is a traditional custom of Indigenous people when welcoming others to their land and into their homes. And so acknowledging that we are on Treaty 7 land in AWA's view honors the original people of this territory. We live, we work, we play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Sixka, the Kanai, the Pekani, the Sutina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, as well as the Métis Nation, Region 3 in Alberta. We acknowledge all nations who live, work, and play and are stewards of this land, and we honour and celebrate this particular territory. So with respect to this morning's speakers, our first speaker is Dr. Andrea Hull, MD. Uh, Andrea is a family physician in Calgary, uh, where she works at the Mosaic Refugee Health Clinic. Uh, Dr. Hull is currently co-chair of the Alberta chapter of CAPE, that's the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment, and she's also co-chair of the Global Health Unit for the undergraduate program at the Cumming School of Medicine here in, at the University of Calgary, where she has worked to introduce planetary health curricula into that program. Our second speaker is Ms. Erica Gulliman, who's representing the Calgary chapter of Extinction Rebellion. Uh, Erica comes to us from a hardworking, pardon me, well, hardworking to be sure, but a hardcore 
coal mining and oil family. Uh, and I think they still love her despite her views this morning. Uh, she's an artist and an activist who has lived and worked in Calgary for more than a decade now and is too in love with this place to leave and go elsewhere. Uh, Dave Mayhood joins us this morning representing the Timberwolf Wilderness Society. Uh, Dave is an aquatic ecologist with FF, pardon me, FWR Freshwater Research Limited and a director of Timberwolf Wilderness Society. Uh, Dave is an acknowledged expert on the conservation biology of Alberta's West Slope cutthroat trout. And finally, my name again is Ian Urquhart. I'm the conservation director here at AWA. Uh, I'm also a professor emeritus at the University of Alberta where I taught a four letter word of uh, politics for uh, more than 30 years. Uh, my primary research interest then is now is public policy and specifically the interface between exploiting natural resources and conservation. So with that, opening introductions. Uh, Andrea, we'll turn the floor over to you for your remarks this morning. Thank you so much, Ian. It's a real pleasure to be part of this panel this morning. Cape Alberta is strongly opposed to open pit coal mining in the eastern slopes like the Grassy Mountain Mine due to the significant impacts that will have on the well-being of Albertans. Firstly, not only do our Rocky Mountains and foothills define us as Albertans, but access to these natural places is really important for our health. It is well understood that time in nature improves our emotional, psychological, and physical well being. The areas under threat are the very places that give Albertans bragging rights about our spectacular backyards and that support a thriving tourism industry. These are places we have seen people flocking to for a hike or picnic, especially during times of COVID restrictions. And I've felt the joy it brings to families to be out there together, to breathe the fresh air, explore creeks, and be awed by unspoiled panoramas. This is also where people have lived in connection with the land for generations. Seeing our surrounding natural environment destroyed in front of our eyes can negatively impact our mental health. We have witnessed the mental health consequences for people during fires and floods in this province. Having whole landscapes stripped open will be a slow motion natural disaster. Secondly, coals are being proposed at the headwaters of the Old Man River and North Saskatchewan River. Effectively, this could threaten the drinking water for over a million Albertans, particularly in Lethbridge and Edmonton. We already have examples of horrific water contamination from these kinds of mines. Coal mines in BC, just across the border, have polluted fresh water with high levels of selenium, which is toxic to humans and aquatic life. This is causing major downstream effects all the way to the US, with many reports of deformed fish and concerns for the drinking water in communities. And despite spending $600 million to address the contamination, this issue continues. There's also growing evidence that living near coal mines is harmful to people's health. Is that the future we want in Alberta? Lastly, it is evident that coal mining is not a sustainable way of creating long-term employment and healthy communities. Albertans have ridden the roller coaster of boom and bust cycles for too long and suffered the health consequences with increased rates of depression and anxiety during down times. Domestic violence and addiction issues have also been linked to boom bust cycles in mining communities. We cannot allow the whispers of short term jobs to cloud our judgment of what we know in our hearts and minds to be true. That our Rockies and foothills should not be for sale. That our headwaters must be protected and that there are better solutions to finding long-term economic prosperity, which don't involve sacrificing the health of our children. The environment is the foundation of our health system. These areas under threat are of far greater value to all of us while they remain intact. As health professionals, we demand that our government stop these proposed coal mines in order to protect the safety and well-being of its citizens. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Andrea, for those words. Uh, Erica, uh, would you like to uh, address your audience uh, this morning at this point in time? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Erica Gulliaman. I am representing the Extinction Rebellion Calgary, and we in turn represent people in Calgary and Alberta who recognize that we urgently need to shift course for the sake of our future, for the sake of our remaining natural world, and especially in this case, for the sake of its precious water supply. The science that solidifies the link between our way of life and the way we extract our resources, uh, the link between that and the consequential environmental damage is, is solid, it's established. We've known for decades, I am almost 30 and I have been raised knowing about climate change. I've known my whole life about this. So for decades, we've pushed this problem out of mind and onto the next generation. And frankly, we're running out of time to diversify in the wrong direction. We're running out of time to take, step, take steps backwards that will have disastrous consequences. So Extinction Rebellion Calgary is here to stand uh, by and stand against any who would serve to sell out our future and the future of their children, our children, and the children that my generation is afraid to have for a quick and easy buck. This project benefits only a minority while damaging a watershed necessary to the region. So we need to push back against this kind of unscrupulous politics. We need to push back against the companies who have spent decades sowing skepticism and denial, muddying the picture. And we need to push back against unethical legislation passed while the world has its gaze diverted. So there was a time when people would plant trees whose shade they knew they would never sit in. And it's time to go back to planting trees, stop making short-sighted cash grabs with long-term consequences. It's time to start protecting our natural world. And with that, I guess all I can say is the only place for coal in 2020 should be in our history books in the past. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Erica. Uh, Nissa, can you uh, pull up the, uh, the video from Bill Trafford of the Livingston landowners, please? Hi, my name is Bill Trafford. I'm the president of the Livingston Landowners Group, a group of about 125 people living in the area north of the Old Man River and east of the Livingston Mountain Range. Um, we are uh, an, an intervener in the case against the Grassy Mountain Mine, and we have two or three big issues with it. Number one is uh, water. Um, as you probably all know, uh, the rivers coming out of the eastern slope are the source of water for all southern Albertans. So for drinking, for irrigation, for all, all purposes, and water is life. The damage to the ecosystem because of the selenium is also um, very high. Selenium is known to kill fish and there's a number of endangered species in the area that uh, would be impacted by this. The province has, and the federal government of Canada, are trying to determine whether this is in the best interests of Albertans and Canadians. And um, most recently, the Royal Bank of Canada announced a policy that said they would no, no longer invest or fund any activity associated with <clears throat> mountaintop removal for coal mining. So if, if the Royal Bank of Canada, the largest bank in Canada, um, thinks this is a bad investment, it's, very, it's not clear how Alberta or the federal government can come to a different conclusion. Thank you, Nissa, for, uh, for uh, sharing that video from Bill Trafford of the Livingston. A landowners group. Uh, Dave Mayhood from uh, the Timber, representing the Timberwolf Wilderness uh, Society is our next speaker this morning. Dave. 
Thanks, Ian. Um, I'm an aquatic ecologist with uh, FWR, Freshwater Research Limited, but I'm also a director of uh, Timberwolf Wilderness Society. <clears throat> I'm going to read its statement on Timberwolf's position on the matter of the Grassy Mountain Mine. Timberwolf is opposed to the proposed Grassy Mountain surface coal mine. We filed evidence to show that it cannot possibly be built as designed without destroying critical habitat for Westlow cutthroat trout, a species protected as threatened under Canada's Species at Risk Act, which is also known as SARA. SARA forbids destroying any part of the critical habitat of a SARA listed species on pain of very severe penalties. There are no provisions in SARA that would allow the federal government to issue a permit to destroy critical habitat for the purpose of surface mining coal. Offsets proposed to compensate for lost habitat are number one, not provided for under SARA, and number two, not adequate to replace destroyed critical habitat. Accordingly, we argue that the Grassy Mountain Mine cannot be approved by the Joint Review Panel the panel cannot approve an illegal act. In addition, Timberwolf has filed independent expert evidence that the Proponents Environmental Impact Assessment, or EIA, significantly underestimates downstream risks arising from increases in annual precipitation caused by climate change that have been estimated using state-of-the-art methods by others in the Canadian Rockies. It also underestimates modeled future increases in precipitation intensity, duration and frequency arising from climate change. These underestimates increase the likelihood of catastrophic failure of critical mine infrastructure, such as tailings, dams and ditches. That in turn would destroy designated critical habitat and offsetting artificial habitat. Finally, our filed evidence shows that the proponent's EIA fails to account for a significant source of greenhouse gas emissions. In short, Timberwolf asserts that the Grassy Mountain Mine not only cannot be approved as designed, but no conceivable change in the mine plan would make it legal under Sarah to either approve it or to build it. And I'm looking forward to answering questions at the end of the presentations. Dave, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for that. Uh, well, well, everyone, they finally started. I mean, hearings into Benga Mining's plans for an open pit strip mine on Grassy Mountain in the Crow's Nest Pass. Uh, Alberta Wilderness Association, who I'm representing this morning, is asking the Joint Review Panel to reject this project. Uh, like more than two dozen other organizations and many individuals from the Crow's Nest participating in these hearings, uh, we believe the grassy project is bad for the landscape, bad for the climate, and also bad for the economy. It's taken more than five years for us to get to the point where these hearings can start, and some might wonder why is that the case. Well, quite simply, it's because the Joint Review Panel has viewed Benga's impact assessment submissions over the years, dating back to 2016, as inadequate, as lacking. Benga submissions may be sufficient now to finally hold a hearing, but they are not, in AWA's view, sufficient to approve this project. As AWA's experts will argue when they testify before the panel over the coming weeks, Benga's assessment remains terribly deficient. Its assumptions understate the harm this project will do and overestimate its benefits. I thought I'd use my time this morning here to give you several aspect, examples of this pertaining to water that support this view of Benga's assessment and project. What I'll say with respect to water, I would argue will be repeated at the hearings with respect to a wide range of issues that the joint review panel is going to examine. So with respect to water, it illustrates well one area in our opinion, where Benga seriously underestimates and understates the damage this mine will do. With respect to groundwater, Dr. John Fennell, one of our water experts, will testify that the company's modeling of groundwater impacts is, in his view, in his words, a gross simplification with assumptions that do not match with the reality of the project area. 
If you're somewhere this morning where you can see the Calgary Tower, uh, take a look at it now. Or if you, if you can't see it, close your eyes and imagine how tall the Cal Calgary Tower is. Benga's open pit mine will permanently, permanently lower the water table under Grassy Mountain by up to 430 meters. That's greater than the height of two Calgary Towers. Dr. Fennell will argue that the impacts this will have on local water supplies will be much more serious than the optimistic modeling of Benga suggests. This will harm the livelihoods of local people, some of who have joined AWA in opposing this project. In addition to permanently lowering the water table, the Grassy Mountain Mine likely will reduce the flows of water through Gold and Blairmore Creeks. These creeks, as Dave alluded to a minute ago, are critical habitat for West Slope cutthroat trout, a threatened species coveted by fly fishers. Lower flows will make higher water temperatures in these creeks more likely. This will reduce further the chances of this species surviving on the Alberta landscape. Dr. John Post, a second water expert that we've retained, will testify that the project will, not may, not perhaps, but will permanently eliminate in-stream and riparian habitat for this endangered species. Government already acknowledges there isn't sufficient critical habitat to recover this species in Alberta's streams. And by reducing West Slope cutthroat trout habitat even further, the Grassy Mountain Mine is erasing the chance my grandchildren will be able to fish for them at some point in the future. What will Benga, what will Benga Mining have to say about the damage that its proposed mine will do to the water table, to local streams, to threaten species. Benga is going to offer you a version of don't worry, be happy. To that end, they'll promise to mitigate the mine's damage. The buzzword they'll use here is adaptive management. But as Lauren Fitch and other of our water experts will argue, the company's adaptive management ambitions are, in Lauren's words, untested, unproven, unsuitable, theoretical, and overly optimistic to ensure West Slope cutthroat trout populations persist. Don't worry, be happy. Instead, we should worry, and we should be very unhappy about what this project promises to bring to the crow's nest for the next quarter century and beyond. Should Benga be allowed to decapitate Grassy Mountain? AWA's firm answer to this is no. At this point in time, what we've done is we prepared a, a PowerPoint presentation that uh, with some, obviously some images included in it, but also what we've added to the PowerPoint are some of the, um, uh, some of the written statements, some of the quotes that are coming from the Grassy Mountain Group, uh, the group of local landowners who's part of, who is part of the coalition that AWA is a member of. So Sean, I'll turn things over to you and if you can get that, if you can get that up and then uh, Christiane Olson, AWA's executive director will be speaking those quotes as this slideshow progresses. Thank you. Voices from the Grassy Mountain Group. The Grassy Mountain Group is a collection of ranchers and landowners in the Crow's Nest Pass who are very concerned about what the Grassy Mountain open pit strip mine will do to their lives. The quotes and spoken words accompanying these slides are from their individual submissions to the joint review panel. We are concerned that the peace, tranquility, and clean air that we enjoy on our lands will be destroyed by Benga's proposed mine project. The noise, dust, excessive traffic, and pollution which the project will bring will definitely destroy the beauty, peace, and tranquility of our lands. There is a long and dismal record of mining companies polluting waterways and degrading natural landscapes. 
new strip mining projects in this day and age seems unfathomable to me in the climate crisis we are facing. I do not have any faith whatsoever that Benga is looking out for the health and well-being of the residents of the Crow's Nest Pass. The project will ultimately destroy my enjoyment and use of my property, both for my personal enjoyment and for grazing my livestock. If this one mine, Grassy Mountain Mine, is approved, this will provide justification for other companies to seek approval to further devastate the whole of the Old Man River watershed. Why allow Banga's operation to potentially leach selenium into the Old Man River watershed, affecting the water quality downstream, having a significant impact on all towns and cities, as well as irrigation districts that supply water to agricultural producers? Does the potential economic gain outweigh the most valuable resource in the world, water? Water, this is a huge issue. It's a well-known fact that waste rock from mining releases selenium. Tech in British Columbia has spent billions of dollars trying to rectify their toxic mess to no avail. Riversdale is also proposing a loadout facility adjacent to the Crow's Nest River, which is a world-class trout stream. We fly fish along Gold Creek, which feeds the Crow's Nest River. Contamination of Gold Creek would be disastrous. What will become of the precious fish habitat when it is contaminated? We believe Alberta's future depends on water, not coal. Our family leads groups of girl guides, beavers, cubs, and scouts on adventures they will recall as magical for many years. Our fathers and grandfathers made this possible as the trees grow from their ashes. Grassy Mountain, with all its beautiful lakes, creeks, and landscape, will cease to exist and will be replaced with a dusty environment, unusable for future generations, and totally worthless. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christiane. Uh, Nissa, so let me turn things uh, back to you. And I think all, all the members of the panel who are here this morning are uh, more than happy to try to answer any questions that uh, the media may have for us this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Um, so currently, I don't have anyone that's requesting uh, to ask questions in the chat box. So what I'll do is just open the floor to any media personnel that may want to ask a question at this time. This is Tim Kalinowski from the Lethbridge Herald. Uh, obviously, the hearing starting today, you guys are going to be presenting these presentations and these facts. How confident are you that the uh, joint review panel is going to take these things into account in its decision and uh, ultimately, you know, given the government's position seemingly in support of coal um, mining, uh, how that will work? Uh, it's Ian, Ian Urquhart here. Let, let me take the first stab at that. Uh, you know, I mean, we have to be, we, we have to be confident and optimistic given, speaking from the perspective of uh, the AWA coalition that has the Grassy Mountain Group as, as a member, um, given the quality of, 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 of the research that we think we are presenting to the joint review panel, um, one of the things that I think is really striking about this is, and this goes back to how long it took us to get to this point in time, there have been a total of 12 addendums made to the initial impact assessment that Banga Mining produced back in August of 2016. And what this has told me over the years is that the joint review panel has, has just not been happy 
with the quality of the information that they're getting from that they're getting from Benga. And I, and I really firmly believe that the, the, the type of research that our experts are going to present, you know, blast, maybe that's not the right word to use, or maybe it is in talking about coal mining, but like blast major holes in the, in the assumptions that, that Benga has made as part of it, as part of its proposal. So, yeah, I think we're, so we're, we're optimistic that the joint review panel will recommend that uh, this has significant adverse environmental effects and, and they're not justifiable. And the other point, you know, like what about the governments? The, the, the really, the important thing about this panel is it's a joint panel. This is not a decision that is just being left to the provincial government in Alberta. If it was, we wouldn't even be having, in my view, these hearings at all. The fact that it's a joint review panel has made, you know, the, the amount of participation that is that we're seeing now possible. And I, I'm optimistic that that Minister Wilkinson and, and, and the federal government, through some decisions they've made recently with respect to the Tech Castle project in the Elk Valley, with respect to the Coal Spur project in uh, south of south of Hinton, uh, are going to be receptive to these sorts of arguments as well. Yeah, anyone else want to take a stab at it? I also have a follow-up question, if that's all right. I guess my follow-up, I'll just tell that to you guys now, and you guys can take a stab at the first one or the follow-up, whatever one you prefer. Um, I guess, you know, we look at around uh, southeast, southwest Alberta here, we look at Lethbridge, used to be called Coal Banks. We have Coaldale, we have uh, we have Coalhurst. Uh, we have so many uh, allusions to the, the coal mining past of this part of the province. This is not the first time we've mined for coal here. What makes this different in your guys' minds than, say, that previous uh, coal mining experience which brought so much wealth and prosperity to the early uh, part of southwestern Alberta so many years ago? If I may actually answer this one, uh, I, I get asked a lot about um, how we've had a history of mining and fossil fuel extraction in Alberta, and I personally know so many people who come from mining dynasties, you know, like generations of people who depended on this uh, for their livelihood. But the fact is, time is the times have changed. Culture is changing. And we know that this is not the... We, we know the impacts that this has on the environment. We know what it does to the environment. And we know that this is a matter of choosing profit over the health and safety of people, over their environment, over their homes. So I guess what I have to say on that matter is it is a matter of the past and it is okay and acceptable to leave the past in the past and move forward to a new direction. We don't have to be Coaldale. We don't have to go back to being a coal province. We can leave that as a part of our history and look for new enrichment opportunities because they exist. They're there. Um, may I jump in here as well? Uh, there's a big difference between coal mining in mountains and coal mining out on the plains. The, um, the terrain is is much steeper, obviously. It's much wetter. Um, there's a much greater chance for serious erosion problems. And um, there's a, a much bigger problem with uh, rock exposure um, uh, due to just simply removing, literally removing the mountain and shipping it off offshore. Um, the, the environmental effects are quite different. Uh, and much more serious in mountainous terrain. If I could add, if I could add just something to that, to, to this, to this stream as well, and and, and Dave's alluded to it. You know, th there's a gigantism involved, and in, you know, we're, we're talking about what's a term we will use to describe this this sort of mining, mountain top removal mining. Uh, so th there's a scale, there's a gigantism to this that makes it, I think, qualitatively hugely different from uh, what went on in the past. And that past isn't something I think we should feel guilty about or sad about or, 
or, or apologize for. I mean, I think that I think we should. I, I think there there's much there to there's much there to celebrate the toughness, the perseverance of coal miners and the Crow's Nest Pass in the early years of the last century. I mean, I think those are amazing. Those are amazing stories. Uh, but this is but this is like. You know, the, the scale of this makes it qualitatively just very different. And, and I do think, too, uh, one of the arguments that Benga will make, and, and one that I look forward to our experts taking them to task on, is the, you know, the benefits, the, the economic benefits that are supposed to, that are supposed to um, flow from this. And, and here I have to say that I really believe that you know, the primary beneficiaries of what's going to happen in the crow's nest if this proceeds, aren't Albertans and aren't Canadians. They're the, 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 they're the people who own the private equity company Hancock in Australia. Those are gonna be the real beneficiaries of this. It will create some jobs, there's no doubt about that. But that isn't, it's not impossible uh, to create other jobs as well. And, and the sorts of, the jobs assumptions they've made, the economic impact, the benefits that they will claim, we think are, again, and that's sort of going back to understated, um, the flip side is overestimating things. And, and we think Benga is guilty of that on the economic side of this project. So at this time, I don't have any requests for questions in the chat box, so I will make the floor available to any other media questions that may, may be out there still. I'll just add one more thing. We have a great deal of information on the effects of mountaintop mining. We can simply look next door to um, southeastern British Columbia and see the massive destruction that's going on. There's a mine there on the Fording River that is 30 kilometers by 10 kilometers wide. It's These are as astonishing areas that are completely obliterated by uh, the removal of the rock and and complete rearrangement of the topography. Uh, we also know uh, especially well from mountain top removal and valley fill operations uh, for coal in uh, Virginia and the Appalachians generally. There are massive problems that are being caused there with water quality. Um, and it's just a, an overall massive destruction of uh, not just natural values, but values, natural values that we need to survive. These are, these are horrendous operations and we can look forward to the same uh, going forward in not just Grassy Mountain, but uh, at up to four or five more that are already uh, in various stages of application uh, north of Grassy Mountain. This is a real problem that's, that's going forward is going to be a, a huge issue before the Alberta people. And all of this was announced, uh, not, not Grassy Mountain, but these newer ones were announced with no notification and, and no uh, opportunity to comment uh, by people uh, of Alberta. And, and yes, just to add to that great point that um, David made, you know, the studies showing from the Appalachian mountaintop coal mining areas is that the economic costs of health problems are up to five times greater than the economic benefits from the mining. So I think there really is um, that to consider um, when we're looking at these major operations and the health effects related to them. Also, Southern Alberta is internationally recognized as an amazing tourist destination. It draws in dollars and accolades 
as a top green and sustainable destination are. I think these are the kinds of headlines we'd like to continue to garner instead of headlines that could be downstream toxic effects continue from abandoned mine sites. I think we need to consider the long-term effects of these mining operations in these areas. All right, so it is almost 1045. I'm gonna give everyone else a, an opportunity to ask any questions that they may have. And then if not, we will uh, adjourn this meeting. All right. Uh, so thank you so much for everyone to everyone sorry for attending this press conference um if you have any questions uh, that come up later please feel free to email me and uh once again this this uh press conference has been recorded so i can make that recording available to anyone that that may be interested as well um thank you again for joining us and uh, have a great day